Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to the webinar, Automation in Technical Recruiting. A quick introduction about myself. I'm Sachin Gupta, one of the founders at Hacker Earth, and you can find me at the following coordinates. A little bit about Hacker Earth. So Hacker Earth is an enterprise software business, and we help businesses in hiring the right talent by adopting a skill-based hiring process. In today's webinar, for the next 30 or so minutes, we will be talking about the following agenda. First, we will begin with, uh, by discussing about, by understanding the need for automation in recruiting. Then we'll move on to understand where are, what are the various processes, what are the various stages within the recruiting process where we can effectively leverage automation and towards the end we'll focus in in more detail on automation in technical screening so if you look at the various functions of running a business today for instance finance sales operations a lot of them have been automated have been impacted by technology in a significant manner but if you look at recruiting it continues to be heavily manually driven and at certain, at certain stages even inefficient. So let's look at some data to understand what are the inefficiencies that exist within the recruiting process. This is from a data that has been, that has been shared by ideal.com, a resume screening platform. And they say that on an average, a recruiter spends almost 23 hours in sorting through resumes for closing one position. So for one hire, a recruiter ends up spending close to 23 hours in just resuming, in, sort, in, in just sorting through resumes. That's a highly inefficient and time consuming process. What's even worse is that various studies have found, and, and you know this is a ballpark figure, that various studies have found about 88% of the applicant, applicants are actually unqualified for the job. So recruiters, end up spending time sorting through resumes of applicants which are not even qualified for the job. Imagine how much of a time, effort and cost could be saved if some of these aspects of screening can actually be automated. So let's see, this, this is from a screen perspective. If we look from an interviewing perspective, even then there's a non-trivial amount of time that is being spent in processes which if were automated can actually help in significant reduction of costs and time. So if you might have come across the post by the director of talent acquisition at Marketo, where he spoke about how they have found over a period of time that on an average to close one position, the company had to interview about eight candidates and to get eight candidates to interview, they had to go through 80 resumes. So the ratio of recruiting was 80 is to 8 is to 1. Now this ratio was an average across the various roles that existed within the organization. In case of technical recruiting, the, the ratio was slightly better. It was 15, uh, sorry, 20 is to 5 is to 1. But that still meant that for hiring one engineer, the company had to go through five interview, uh, interviews of five different people. Now if we look at any engineering organization, the interviewing process can be fairly complex and can include multiple rounds of interviews. So it would be fair to say that for any good engineering organization, there would be at least three to four rounds of interviews, averaging about an hour or so, and an equal amount of effort would be spent in, going in, in preparing for that interview. So it would be fair to say that an organization is spending about 10 man, 10 dollar per hours for interviewing one technical candidate. Why do I say dollar per hours? Because these interviews are taken by the developers within the organization. So on an average for one interview, for, for interviewing of one candidate, the company spends up, ends up spending 10 dollar per hours. So if for five candidates, that's about 50 dollar per hours spent on interviewing alone. Even if we were to make, even, even if we were able to reduce the number of interviewing candidates from five to four, 
that would be a saving of ten dollar per hour and even if I was to take a modest cost of an engineer hour to say about you know say two hundred dollars an hour that's a saving of two thousand dollars for uh, through by making the interviewing process more efficient but what's challenging in case of automation is that and this is from a study by Sherm it says that 77 percent of the applicants who have searched for a job or are planning to go to market to search for a job prefer human interaction so three quarters of the applicants prefer that they have human interaction while they're looking for a job so while automation can help in reducing the time spent and it can help in saving costs it has the downside of making the process impersonal now that presents a dilemma in front of any hiring manager any uh, recruiting process owner that how do you ensure that the automation that you bring into your system doesn't make the process impersonal you cannot afford to improvise your recruiting processes at the cost of providing inferior candidate experience. In fact, if we look at the uh, reports by LinkedIn over the last two to three years, a superior candidate experience has come out to be a consistent point that organizations need to focus on in order to win the war for talent. So providing a good candidate experience is actually non-negotiable. So there has to be a very tight balance between using automation to make your processes more efficient while ensuring that they do not degrade a candidate experience. So let's look at what are the various steps or what are the various stages where automation can be used without affecting the experience of the candidate. So as I said, you know, one should only leverage automation in those processes that add value without compromising the experience. So the aut automation can be best used for the following four activities. First is the initial candidate communication. Second is resume screening. Third is pre-screening and the fourth is interviewing. And I'll talk about each of these stages along with the kind of automation that you can introduce into the process as well as various products that you can look at while introducing this automation. Though it might sound slightly counterintuitive but yes using automation in the initial candidate communication can actually improve your process and of course help you scale up the process so today we've got chatbot or we have ADSs which are empowered through artificial intelligence that can help you in automating the top of the funnel communication and if we look at it this process is not very different from what we see in sales processes in today's world almost 80 percent top of the funnel sales communication is automated and that provides a far better experience to the end user than a manual process would because first it ensures first most important it ensures that there is timely communication we all know the kind of volume that recruiters have to deal with for each position you know we're talking about going through 80 profiles uh, to hire one candidate so that's just the number of profiles that we go through. Imagine the number of resumes that come in through the job so job portals, the number of applications that come through directly from the website. If we combine all of these sources, we're talking about significant number of candidates that applicants that come into a recruiter's inbox every day. How does a recruiter ensure that the experience that these candidates get is not subpar? In those cases, having an automated response mechanism which not only sends out the first response to the candidate but also sends them timely updates on the whole interviewing process can be pretty significant. In fact, various surveys have found that if the candidates get timely updates about their interviewing process, they find the process much more comfortable and they like it because that's, that's the way, uh, now they're much more informed about where is their applicant application status. The worst thing that a candidate wants is to put in a resume and not know when the response would come from the other side. And these chatbots or, or you know, AI equipped ADS can not only help with timely candidate communication, 
but they can also help in simple pre-qualification of the candidates. For example, simple questions around the experience that the person has, the kind of uh, the location at which they, they want to work, the kind of visa they have if they're coming in from other parts of the world can actually help in pre-qualification of candidates and help you filter out the irrelevant candidates, saving both time for your recruiters as well as you know avoiding the trouble for the applicants to go through when they're not even suitable or when they're not even qualified for the job. The second place is, as I said, resume screening. As we've all seen, there's a high volume of resumes or, or applicants that come into every job. And this poses a significant challenge in efficient resume screening. The problem with dealing with high volumes is not only that you end up spending a lot of time in screening the resumes, but but it also results in some sort of bias that creeps in over a period of time and inefficiencies. When we have to look at hundreds of resumes, we end up coming up with patterns that, you know, that may or may not be objective, and then we start screening those resumes based on those pattern, uh, patterns. So any kind of automation in this process will not only help in scaling the process, but will also help in re remo removing some of the biases. These days, there are systems that leverage artificial intelligence to screen candidates based on minimum qualifications. So you can define what are the minimum qualifications that you need from a candidate, and it will not only do keyword matching, but also use advanced AI techniques to filter out the right candidates. What's even better is that you can use your existing resume databases and your uh, employee information to further strengthen these patterns and improve your predictions. So idle.com is, is one of the platforms that allows automated resume screening that can help you with uh, improvising your process in the screening phase of the resumes. The third stage where you can use screening is pre-screening. Uh, sorry, where you can use automation is pre-screening. So pre-screening screening is typically the stage just before the interview. It's the process of either conducting a remote, inter a remote interview or a phone interview where you effect effectively pre-screen the candidates before calling in them for interviews. What this does is it helps you eliminate some of the unqualified candidates and hence saving both time and cost that uh, for for uh, that you would spend in inviting the unqualified candidates and of course you know it gives timely feedback to the candidates and avoids the trouble for for them to come all over to your office and give interviews an effective pre-screening process can actually reduce the time spent on interviewing by more than 40 percent so in the previous slides when I discussed when I talked about how the typical ratio for technical screening, typical candidate ratio for technical hiring is 20 is to 5 is to 1. A good pre-screening process can actually make it 20 is to 3 is to 1. Hence, saving you about 40% of time resources that you would spend otherwise on an interviewing process. And please know that the time that you save here is, is far more significant because it's not just the recruiter's time that you're saving, but it's the it's the developer time that you're saving, the developers who would end up taking up these interviews. It, you know, a good pre-screening system not only provides you, uh, helps you save time and effort, but it also provides a far better candidate experience because it helps you avoid unnecessary interviews. Imagine a candidate who actually is not qualified for the role. If you could, if you could, if you could sort out those candidates without having to call them in to the office by just giving them a test, a remote test that they could do from their own comfort, uh, from the comfort of their own homes, imagine the kind of experience that it would provide to the candidate. They would not have to come down all the way to your office and after one round of interview realize that they're not fit for the interviewing process. But now since you have anyways called the candidates for the interview process, you would still make them go through the other rounds of interviews hence an unnecessary waste of time both for the candidates as well as your interviewers. And the most important thing is a good pre-screening process can actually eliminate human bias and focused on skill-based hiring. No matter how much we deny it, 
biases do exist in any interviewing process. Most of the interviews, most of the interviewers end up trying to match the person on the other end, the interviewee, with what they feel is good about them. And you know, this is the classic problem with interviewing. People try to form patterns on other people and these patterns are mostly derived from their own skills and their own expertise. So having an objective process as a pre-screening mechanism ensures that at least some level of, of evaluation of the candidate happens completely objectively and is not riddled with human biases. What's important, what's even more better is that there are platforms out there, for example, HackerEarth itself, that allow you to do skill-based hiring. So now you, would, you may not be biased by the pedigree of the person or, or, the, or the society from, uh, from where they come or the locations from where they come from. You make a decision based on the candidate's expertise, based on the skills that they demonstrate through the pre-screening tests. And the fourth stage where you can introduce automation is in interviewing itself. So as I was telling you, the average developer cost per hour could be about 200 and I'm being fairly modest here. You know, if we go to the Silicon Valley, the kind of developer cost per hour could be significantly higher. So the cost of interviewing is extremely high. Any amount of efforts, any amount of uh, reduction in the interviewing time can actually result in significant savings on the costs. In addition to that, calling in a candidate for an interview is tedious because of various logistics and tra travel efforts involved. So you need to ensure the availability of all the interviewers, you need to figure out the availability of the candidates, you need to find out the right fit, uh, right fit in terms of time, and do all the logistic efforts to call in the candidate. As I said before, imagine if from the five candidates, you could avoid calling over even one or two candidates, there is a lot of effort that you would save. <clears throat> one of the ways to do this is to use automated interviewing. So there are platforms that allow you to conduct recorded automated interviews in which you could pre-record a set of questions that you want to ask the candidate and then the candidate can take that interview at their own leisure, at their own time. The candidate just needs to open up the test as they come from the comfort of their homes and start answering the pre-recorded set of interview, interview questions. So essentially what you're doing is you're conducting your first in-person interview over, uh, over, over a laptop. And based on the responses that you get in that interview, you can make a decision whether you need to call in the candidate for the final rounds of interview or not. I'm not advocating that we should eliminate in-person interviews altogether because uh, that's not possible. You know, uh, hiring still requires a significant amount of effort and time to be spent in in-person interviews. But the more we can pre-screen, pre the more we can automate before the actual interviews, the more we would be saving in terms of time and effort. So these are the four stages uh, or four, yeah, four stages of the recruiting process where you could use automation without degrading the candidate experience. So just to quick, quickly summarize, we discussed about using automation for the initial communication with the candidates, uh, using automation for resume screening, using automation for pre-screening, and using automation for interviewing. And as I said before, uh, screening is actually one of the toughest part of recruiting. In fact, 50% of the talent leaders say that the hardest part of recruitment is screening. So an automated screening process, uh, process will reduce the time spent and also improve the quality of shortlisted candidates, hence reducing the time spent on interviewing. So what I'm trying to say is that a good automated screening process will not only save time in the screening process itself, but it will also help you save time in interviewing because you would end up improving the quality of your screening. Please note that that automation is not only supposed to cut cost or reduce time spent in an act. A good automation system 
should also improve the quality. Any, any automation system that only impacts the time spent or the effort spent is actually subpar. Because the whole point of, inter of leveraging technology should be to improve on quality as well. So in the previous couple of slides, we have we've discussed about the various stages where you could leverage automation, the kind of processes that you could follow, some examples of product that you could use, uh, that you could use for introducing these automation. In the following few slides, we will focus a little bit more about using automation in the pre-screening process. So a quick introduction about Hacker Earth Recruit. Hacker Earth Recruit is a talent assessment software that allows businesses to automatically assess technical skills using coding tests. So what Recruit does is that it goes and sits in to your, in your stage, which is just after resume screening, but before interviewing. And what it, what it allows you to do is it allows you to administer remote coding tests through which you can automatically assess technical skills of the candidates. Now, if you look at the recruiting funnel, any screening process should be such that it allows you to increase the top of the funnel. Essentially, it allows you to put in as many candidates as you want into the recruiting funnel, yet, give, yet the process should give you only the most relevant candidates so that your hiring managers do not have to compromise on quality. Now, the only way to increase top of the funnel yet, for, yet deliver quality is through automation. And that's where a pre-screening assessment software like Recruit comes in. Any candidate who fits the, the resume match can actually be administered a test. And in fact, even if there, is, if there is not a proper resume match, you could still send out the test link to these candidates because you know, if you look at engineers, they may not be the best resume creators. You know, uh, engineers represent themselves in terms of code that they write, and they are far more comfortable expressing their skill sets and their experience in terms of the programming skills than putting it out on a detailed resume. So it, it is possible that if the recruiter is not very trained on spotting good technical resumes, they actually miss out on some candidates. And we all know that in the recruiting business, false negatives are actually more, uh, more costly than false positives. We can still afford to have a few bad candidates in the interviewing stage, but we cannot afford to have, we cannot afford to miss the right candidate at the top of the funnel itself. So what a process like this does is it helps you to reduce, significantly reduce the time spent on interviewing because you're not shortlisting the unqualified candidates. It allows you to scale your hiring process by allowing you to put in as many candidates as you want at the top of the funnel. And most importantly, it makes the process unbiased and skill driven. Now you're not taking a shortlisting decision based on what you see on the profile of the person, but you're asking them to demonstrate, demonstrate their skills based on an objective process and then taking a decision basis that. Now just to give you an example of, of how some of our customers are using uh, an automated screening process for their hiring, Amazon, as you all know, hires thousands of developers in a year. In fact, uh, in there was, I think last year there was uh, a quote by Jeff Bezos where he said that his developers are spending as much as 40% of their time spending interviews, and that's something that they significantly want to cut down. You know, despite having a lot of good recruitment processes in place, still Amazon is spending so much time on interviewing, which shows that the volume of hiring that they're doing is significant. So what we did with Amazon was Amazon used Recruit for automatically assessing the technical skill of the candidates. In a short duration of just one in 12 months, they were able to screen 40,000 candidates across 300 plus hiring drives. <laughs> and their entire process of screening was fully automated for both university as well as lateral hiring. Note that this entire technical screening process was independently and wholly owned by the recruiting team with very, very little uh, involvement of the hiring manager. So the recruiting team itself on their own were able to screen more than 40,000 candidates. In fact, not just screen, technically screen candidates without having to use 
the bandwidth or the time of technical hiring managers and yet they were able to deliver high quality candidates to the hiring managers. Another example of, of one of our customers who used uh, automated skill assessments for, for improvising their process, the recruitment process, and this was more from university hiring perspective. So Odessa Technologies, they used to conduct pen and paper assessments when they were doing campus, when they were doing university hiring. And there was too much effort involved in conducting something like this. And, in, and it was not only tedious, but the process of screening was also inaccurate. Imagine if you give 10 copies to a developer and ask them to evaluate a programming question. Just evaluating one programming question takes up to say about 20 to 25 minutes if you were to objectively and accurately evaluate that question. Now multiply that with 10. The developer is spending 200 hours just evaluating questions that the, the candidates, these are candidates top of the funnel. These are not candidates who you're going to call in for interview because based on in the assessment, then you take a call on whether you want them to interview or not. So they're spending too much time even before the candidates have come for the recruitment process. And they were also obviously facing difficulties in scaling this, this hiring process. So they started using hacker recruit. As a result, they screened 10,000 candidates across 40 campuses that they have visited in just a short duration of six months. So they, they were able to not only scale the recruiting process, they were also able to improve the quality of the whole process by introducing a skill assessment platform. So with that, I come to the end of the presentation of, on, of, the, of the webinar on the various, uh, on the on automation on recruiting in recruiting process. Just to summarize the whole webinar, we discussed about why is there a need for automation. There is a significant amount of time spent being spent on interviewing, on screening, on identifying the right candidates in the recruiting process. Uh, not only timing is being timing time is being spent, but these processes are also inefficient. So there are various stages in which automation can be used to not only reduce the time and cost, but also to improve the quality. The four stages where we can use automation are in the initial candidate communication, when the first round of communication that goes out to a candidate when they apply either through a job portal or directly through a website. We can use screening for, uh, we can use automation for resume screening, we can use automation for pre screening, and we can finally use automation for everything. And then towards the end of the webinar, we discussed in detail about how one can use a skill assessment platform to improvise the technical training process. So we'll be closing the webinar. Uh, if there are any more questions, you can send it. Uh, send. Uh, you can ask them to us through the uh, in response to the email that we send out to you. Thank you all for attending the webinar. Have a good day.